out there. Don, what's up, Don? Okay, I get. I Bro. Don. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to ask a question though. Like, um, there was a recent incident that happened uh, where some white supremacists actually copped the N word on a black pupil or a black student in the school. And I'm yet to see that much outrage, but I've been seeing that y'all have been putting a lot of snap on Africans and immigrants and all that. So what's up with that? That's my first question. Okay, have y'all done anything about the guy getting the thing carved on him? What have you African and immigrants and Haitians and Caribbeans done about it or said about it? Uh, first of all, I'm not an immigrant to your country. I'm currently in my country. And I'm seeing that you've been throwing a lot of smack all the way from an entire ocean away. Wait, so what country are you in? The greatest black country on the face of this planet, Nigeria. Okay. So you're in Nigeria where you guys are defecating on the street, living in shanty towns, and you're worried about somebody over here that had to deal with white supremacists. We deal with them every day, so it's not breaking news. We're constantly dealing with white supremacists. So just because we don't jump on every single issue that happens, because it's almost impossible, um, doesn't mean that we're not going after white supremacy. We bang on them every day. We try to replace the system of white supremacy with the system of justice every day. And that includes the tether class who comes over and tries to undermine us, who tries to undermine us from a long distance way, just like you're doing. You're not even over here um, throwing salt on us. So what's that about? Uh, okay. Um, well, let me ask you this question. What is a tether? Um, a tether is somebody who tries to undermine foundational black Americans and usually is for the purpose of replacement. And a tether doesn't even have to be over here. That's another thing I wanna get people clear. You got people who are overseas who are tethers wishing that we fall off so that they can replace us. So you, okay. you're, so that's your thing. You're over there, you have nothing to do with us, but you just want a psychological satisfaction of us being attacked your your vitriol goes towards us and we ain't got nothing to do with what you got going on over there that's interesting why is that um i think you're actually projecting because it's more of you putting out stuff that happens on the continent than us doing what doing that to you guys and secondly and in fact we're the ones over here we've tried to elevate the end of your country we've done that for years and Bro, you just actually said we were shooting in the streets. How is that elevating? No, no, because that's a reality. I'm, I'm going to be real. That, that's a reality. For you to come on this phone and then criticize us for any reason, we have to... I didn't criticize you, though. No, we do have to remind you. That's to let you know you're not in a position to point the finger at us whatsoever when things are really down bad over there. You understand? We, we're gonna, um, I do not agree. You no, know, we got to let you know, don't go, you know, don't go overboard with your wagging the finger. You're not in a position to wag the finger. It's just like um, if you help a homeless person, now here, here's some money, I'll see you down bad. And the homeless person says, you know what, I don't like your clothes. You have to remind that homeless person, hey man, you got a piss stain on your pants now. All right, you better take this help and be humble. That's the problem. You got piss stains on you, and when we try to help you, you get arrogant about it and then try to say how we need to get ourselves together. And we have to remind you, hey, man, there's a dookie stain on your shoe. You feel what I'm saying? No. And because I actually didn't attack you, all I did was ask a question, and then you went all defensive. No, no, Why? no, no. Very passive-aggressive, sir. You were, you were passive aggressive. That wasn't a question. That was a passive aggressive statement, sir. And you really got to get it together at home before you can point fingers, sir. That's what we're saying to you, right? Don? Mr. Don, unmute yourself, sir. Oh, Don, you, you, you're kind of quiet. Everything all right over there, Don? Don? Yeah, actually, you muted me for a while. But anyways, um, I, I wanted to ask again, how is it possible somebody who is not even in your country somehow can replace or undermine you from an end? 
because you want to. That's the thing. You you have a desire to try to undermine us, and a lot of you guys do stuff online um, and try to signal boost anti foundational Black American messages and sentiments. So you try to do that stuff from afar. There's a lot of weird um, vitriolic hate and contempt that comes from a lot of non-FBA people. And I don't think you guys are used to us calling that out. Right? Um, okay, are you saying we have that much power to put you down? I mean, you're for like, you, you always talk about being the most powerful fighters, revolutionaries. So you're telling me people who still shit on the streets have that much power to put you down and undermine and their hatred goes that far? Really? Yeah, well, you know what? A flea has the power to irritate. If a flea bites me on the neck all the time, I'm going to have to acknowledge that flea at some point. You know what I'm saying? That's what we're saying. Okay. Not about power. Oh, it's... it's about um, people trying to undermine us by being a nuisance to our progress. And sometimes we have to acknowledge the nuisance. Sometimes we have to flick the flea off of us. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we're doing with, with tethers like you. We're just kind of flicking the fleas off of us sometimes when we try to I'm get I'm actually to... not a tether because I'm not in your country. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're, you're tetherish. You're very tetherish, sir. Because you're sitting over there 10,000 miles away kind of hating on us. And the reason why you guys are hating on us because a lot of you pray for our downfall so that you can get some shine. That's what we're talking about. Tether. Why do we need shine from your downfall? What exactly is there for? Because, because we are a foundation of Black Americans are the face of Blackness globally. That's why. And you're not, sir. Right? That's why. Because foundation of Black Americans, when you think of Black people, we are the face of Blackness globally. When you think of a Black person, you think of foundation of Black Americans. And a lot of cats, a lot of people especially from Africa and Caribbean, not all of you, but a lot of you feel a certain way about that. A lot of y'all feel a certain way about that. I don't think any African cares to be the face of blackness globally, because that would mean every negative stereotype about blackness gets ascribed to your little group. And FBA is not even recognized. The correct term is black American or African American, but I digress. Slow down, slow down, because yeah, any you can come over and be a black American, so no, 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 no. Barack Obama could be considered a black American. They're trying to say Kamala Dam Harris is a black American. So now we're letting the world know we're defining what a foundational black American is. We have those terms. We're not letting people name us and then remix us and throw other groups in with us in order to weaken our lineage anymore. We're not doing that. We are setting the terms of what we're going to be defined as, and it's going to be based on our lineage. We're foundational Black Americans. We're not going to let people just kind of walk in and cosplay and tether onto our lineage like they're trying to do with Kamala and other people, sir. That's a power move. And we are okay. re we are recognized. That's why you recognize. That's why you salty about it and you're 10,000 miles away. So it's resonating globally. Look how tight you are about it. I'm not talking about it. First of all, Kamala is not even black. If anybody can speak on blackness, that's me because I'm the original or mixed 100% full black. 100%. And I'm telling you to your face, Kamala is. No, no, no. And then, second, we don't care about. No, you're... no, 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 no. You are African, sir. Many of you guys weren't even calling yourselves black until us. You guys were not calling or referring to yourselves as black. You refer to yourself as you uh, and your tribes, which is fine. That's okay. What the hell do you think, Sudan, Guinea, Zanj? What the hell do you think those words mean? If we weren't calling those, ourselves black, those words mean names that the white supremacists started carving out for you when they carved those countries up. They started giving those countries different names. Y'all were were carved up and colonized by the white supremacists. Nigeria. That country was named by Madame Flora Shaw, a white woman. A white woman named you that country, sir. So they were naming... And your country was named by Amerigo Vesucci, an but, Italian. But, What's the difference? Oh, it wasn't. No, 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 no. There was a, a, an aboriginal tribe all the, over here, the Amerisque tribe. The Amerisque tribes, they were a tribe of black-skinned aboriginal people down there in the Nicaragua area. Nicaragua means black water, by the way. 
the Amoriske people, that's an old word that's been around for a long time. That's where the name America really came from, the Amoriske tribe. Amerigo versus Vespucci, his name wasn't even Amerigo. He changed his name. You understand? You see? And plus, why would they name? Let's let's get into the thing. And I talked about Amerigo, the Amerigo Vespucci myth. Why would they name an area after this guy who wasn't royalty? He wasn't a royal guy. He wasn't a royal. You you would name places after royalty and you would give them um um you would like Jamestown, places like that. Charlotte, Charlottesville, after Queen Charlotte. Columbus, they would name things after um Christopher Columbus. There's a lot of places called Columbus. Um but America of this future, his name was, I think his real name was Albert or some shit. But yeah, it's a, it's a deep story behind that. But go ahead, Don. Uh, now get a real quick history. Um, okay, let me now ask you. Thank God you talked about colonization and stuff, and you believe you're in. We call it, say that again, sir. Don, I didn't hear you, sir. Go ahead. Don, I don't have you muted, sir. Let's try. I didn't understand what you said. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Go ahead. All right. So, I'll, okay, yeah, I was saying, you said, uh, Tango, you talked about colonization and all that. We got carved up and all that. Uh, I think white people actually carved up your country too. And you believe you're indigenous or you're aboriginal, like you love to say. So how did it happen that you lost your entire continental landmass to a bunch of Europeans who came on ships to the point where all your cultural identity and sensitivity and heritage for thousands of years got wiped out and now you're now um completely different and then you're living on the terms of those same europeans who outnumber and dominate you on your so-called ancestral soil mm -hmm. isn't that diabolical great you tell me because it happened to you and you're living it right now so you tell me how it works that's exactly what my country is 99 percent no, no, and it's not, and, and colonized the hell out of it and you got colonized by a minority group and they changed the name you're no, living no, in no, the no, no, no. you tell black, me black you black just black. described yourself sir your ancestral homeland got invaded by a small group of white supremacists and then they colonized the hell out of you on your own ancestral land and then renamed it we're going to independence no, no, independent my ass you just got some independence a couple of decades ago and that's just on paper they still control your finances there and now the asians are coming over doing the same thing now to the point where you can you name the institutions that control Nigeria's point finance? Where you have to hop on inner tubes to flee your homeland, sir. You got colonized and remixed, and you're the majority. Over here, black people, we're only 12, 13% of the population, sir. You understand? And we still bring Wait. that heat to these white supremacists, and we still don't allow them to have us living down bad in shanty towns defecating on the streets, sir. So you tell us how people feel. living on Skid Row. So you tell oh, Skid Row is a lot of white homeless people and all the you know, homeless people or whatever. Foundational Black Americans, we ain't living in shanty towns, sir. But half of the homeless population in your country is black. Uh, What's up, sir? We're not living in shanty towns, and not half of the population. Um, a lot of white people are homeless. A lot of Hispanic people are homeless. You understand? Homelessness—that's something different. Yes, I do. That's something different. But half of the but homeless people are FBA. What's going we on? We don't have whole shanty towns, though. And even the homeless people ain't living like that. Even the homeless people ain't living. How they the living? They ain't living. They ain't living that bad. They're not even living. Okay, so let me get this straight. On one hand, you accuse us of living in huts and all I that, and another time we are living in shanty towns. towns. Yes, yes, yes. Homeless people ain't living like that. They're not whole. Pack shanty towns and villages of homeless black people like that out here. We don't have that, sir. So what you talking about? What are you What are you talking about, sir? Go ahead, Don. Was my dog? Shut the hell up, Don. What's happening? Oh, 
get my dogs out of here. Don, what's happening? I don't hear you. I don't have you muted, Don. See, this is why I don't like doing my shows in the daytime. Because there'd be too much going wow. on. Don, unmute your microphone. I don't have you muted, Don. All right. Yeah, thank you. Um, Listen, I feel like you're just trying to argue and, you know, go back and forth. Um, What's up with... um? Okay, whatever it is, whatever it is. Um, Trump recently, Trump recently um, tried to pull a dog whistle on um, Kamala Harris um, supporting tax paid reparations, and I can see that you've been shilling really hard for Trump. And um, I'm... hello, did you hear what I said? Yeah. Did you hear what yeah, I said? You said I've been shilling for Trump, and I have not. I haven't. Um, I'm not. Okay. Let's, but I know you're definitely gonna you're you're leaning towards you know trying to vote or align with Trump. I mean, as a form of punishment against the Democrats, right? I'm, I'm not actually voting for anybody right now. I'm voting for the couch. That's where I'm voting. And why does the election? See, this is um, what I'm saying. You in you're in a whole different country. Why does this election affect you so much? Why are you so? Why you got? Because America is an imperialist core, and whatever you do there might have a direct effect on our countries. You got to understand that you're like the same people involved and, you know, um, try to destabilize the entire continent, get involved in elections, sponsor coups, which have played a role in leaving, you know, many countries impoverished and, you know, in, in, unstable. So whoever arrives that would be in the White House, we can't play That's Britain. Britain. That's Britain doing doing because we actually slow do down, care, down. right? Look at what's going slow on down. in the Middle East in Gaza. Whoever emerges in that city gets to play a role in how that war will play out. Look at what's... Hold on. That would be Britain. How come you don't have the smoke for Britain? Britain is doing all of that. Britain was the one that destabilized you, and they're still destabilizing you. That would be Britain. Uh, Britain is not even involved in Nigeria's affairs anymore. The only thing left of them are the companies that they left behind. We gained our independence. I don't know if you forgot. Well, yeah, you got your independence like on you. paper, yeah, but they still control that ass. Uh, let me get prof- What exactly did they control? Hold on, let me. What exactly did they control? Did Professor name- Allen in the building. Pro- Professor Allen, how are yes, you? Yes, yes, sir. Doing well, brother Tariq. I just want to address this real quick, and I'm gonna get out your way. Um, I, as I listened to him babble, I wanted to ask myself the question, why does he care? And I came up with a conclusion based on Claude Anderson. Let me hit you with some scholarship. According to Dr. Claude Anderson, as a matter of fact, ethnic and racial immigrants have historically been a wedge between whites and blacks, giving whites an alternative to interacting with blacks. Each time in history, either before or after a war, when the American economy was expanding and could have offered material economic benefits to blacks, a new influx of immigrants refugees arrived to fill the void and further exile blacks from fruitful participation in the national life, according to historian Dan Lacey. That answers it. He up here drooling over our position in the United States. He's drooling over two things. A, our position in the United States, and B, Bushmeat. Come out. Thank you so much. Bushmeat is actually delicious, so that's not even a clap back. Bushmeat is great. It's a healthy... Yes, uh, yes I bet it is to you. I know them um, hyena back and, and giraffe wings are delicious, but go ahead, Don. I'll let you close it out. We don't have giraffes in West Africa. We don't have giraffes. I just wanted to say, listen, at the end of the day, you're fighting an enemy that is really yourself because 1.4 billion Africans do not really play a role. I can't or hear you, Don. We, Don, Don, we can't hear you. Okay, basically what I'm trying to tell you is at the end of the day, 1.4 billion Africans strong on their continent do not play a direct role in your parent predicament in the United States. If it happens today that the entire African continent disappears or like every single black immigrant goes back home, the same very issues we have with the white supremacy that you claim to be fighting are still going to exist. So I would just line my plane by saying, the enemy you're fighting is within yourself. Thank you for the audience. Have a lovely day. Bye. All right. The enemy you guys are fighting is each other because you are tribalistic over there and y'all haven't gotten those tribal things together so that you can unify Africa and then stop letting people come in there and just colonize you left and right instead of worrying about what we're doing over here. Why is all eyes on us? You got all eyes on us, but you ain't worrying about what's happening over there. 
From New York Times best-selling author Tariq Nasheed comes foundational Black American Race Baiter, the groundbreaking book shaking up the conversation on race in America. As one of the most influential voices for Black Americans today, Nasheed exposes the tactics used to manipulate, subjugate, and control Black communities. In this powerful read, Tariq Nasheed equips you with the knowledge to resist injustice and reclaim your narrative. Don't miss out on the book that's redefining the game. Foundational Black American Race Baiter, available now at officialfba.com. Get your copy today.